Yeah, so today I just want to talk to you about the struggle, the experience, and the real life experiences of building something with WebRTC. So WebRTC is a completely new way to create voice, video, and data channels between computers using only web technologies. That means no more Flash, no more browser plugins, it's just JavaScript. And with it, we get a completely new set of tools for building communication solutions on any device. Sending data directly from person to person across platforms is all possible using this universal language. The peer-to-peer -peer component uh, not only gives us great call quality, but it also saves us a ton of money because we're not running like these old flash media servers and proxying all the bandwidth and everything. And while WebRTC is great, uh, as far as technology goes, it's still pretty new. Uh, for most of its lifetime, it's kind of been marked as like demo fodder and not usable for any real applications. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, while WebRTC is a cool vision, uh, it's pretty difficult to build a real business off of. There's tons of cool demos that work fine on Chrome, but we need to be able to build more than just demos. Every platform you develop for comes with this crazy set of hacks to master. You're dealing with vendor prefixing, proprietary browser plugins, third-party adapters, polyfills, native extensions, and all sorts of other stuff. And each one of those exports a completely different set of APIs that don't really interoperate with one another. But before we get into all that, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's see what the APIs we're talking about actually are. So first off, it's not really a video call if we don't have access to the person's camera, so we gotta get that. The API for this is get user media. You've probably seen this for a while. It's in like every cool demo on CodePen. Now the first option for this, uh, you get to specify which streams you need. So in this example, we're just saying video true, which means we only want the video stream. And in this one, we're saying we also want the audio. So video true, audio true. Uh, the permission model is the exact same thing as geolocation. So when you ask for the user's camera, you get this little prompt that pops up uh, and the user then can go and say like, oh, I wanna use this webcam or this microphone. Uh, and one thing that's kind of a gotcha that just recently happened was uh, this only works for HTTPS. So if you don't have a certificate, you can't ask for the user's camera anymore. So be aware of that. And once we get the stream and we need to set it on the DOM, we just take a video element and we say SRC object, or in some older browsers, it's just SRC, uh, equals the video stream we just got. So here's a demo I made with this. Uh, it's a kaleidoscope of your webcam laid over a 16-year-old Swedish rapper's music video with randomized CSS filters and animations. And as you move your mouse cursor around, the kaleidoscope like shifts. So you become like an interactive part of this kid's music video. Uh, most importantly for all the WebRTC stuff is the ability to connect peer to peer between multiple clients. So the API for this is called peer connection, which is where things start to get more real and less demo-y. The, there's kind of like a song and dance for getting two people connected to one another. The first person has to be an initiator and they create an offer to the other person who will call the receiver. So the offer message has all the information that the receiver needs to figure out how to connect back to the initiator. So in this code, we create a peer connection instance, create an offer, and then I have a little comment that says to do, but that's where we would have like a web socket or some way to send that message to the other user. And on the receiver end, when they get that message, they create a new peer connection, set their camera stream on it, uh, pass in that message we just got, and they create this answer message that goes back that has the same information in it. Uh, once all of this exchanging is done, both of the peers can connect directly to one another. So if you want people to be able to send arbitrary data back and forth, like text messages or binary blobs or whatever, uh, we get this thing on the peer connection called the data channel. And with the data channel between two peers, uh, we get like support for array buffers, which means you can send pretty much anything. Uh, and you can treat it just like a WebSocket. So in this, we're just saying sup to the other peer. And you can create multiple channels on the same peer connection and you give them unique names. A unique advantage of WebRTC's data channels is that you get to pick whether you wanna use TCP or UDP. So given like a user chat in a game, for example, 
you definitely don't want their messages to get lost. So you want to put that on a reliable channel like TCP, but game, let's say you're like walking around a map, those movement messages, you don't care if they get lost because there's another one coming right after it, and you can tween in between those data points. So you can just throw that on UDP, which means those messages get there faster with lower latency. So while that's good, I, that's just like the basics. Uh, so let's get to how I use this all to make a real product. So this time last year, I sold pretty much everything I owned and got in a car and drove to San Francisco so I could build real products for real people. Uh, that started a hellish nightmare roller coaster ride that is implementing WebRTC across multiple platforms and trying to ship that in less than a month. So the initial prototype of the product is the easy part of the process, and by that I mean deceivingly easy. Uh, I started out on Chrome because obviously like we use Chrome, I know that WebRTC works in Chrome, it's going to be the quickest uh, option to get the product out the door. Uh, so everything worked fine, did a quick test on Firefox because Firefox also has WebRTC and that seemed to work cool too, just needed a little bit of vendor prefixing to make that work. So the testing feedback for the product was really good, so it's like cool, we know that people want this thing, it works, we have a prototype, let's dive in and build it. So when every feature of the product was done, I did some more testing. And it turns out the market that I was targeting does not use Chrome or Firefox on a desktop. So this was a huge like uh, kind of moment. Uh, and at this point I thought like, well, are we just gonna have to wait for WebRTC to come out on all these other things? Uh, and the answer is no, you can't just wait. A fact that I learned from this is 19% of Americans don't even own computers and use mobile phones as their primary means of accessing the internet, which is crazy. So yeah, now I have this worthless code base on my hands and no pathway to get users and somehow I am tasked with making this work. We could just go down the path where if a user comes to our website in anything that's not Chrome, we say, oh yeah, this is Chrome only, you gotta go download Chrome, show them a nice little modal with a link to download Chrome and maybe explain like why they need to get it. But that's a terrible idea. Yes, you do have to support other platforms. I know it's difficult. But if you've made the decision that it only needs to work on Chrome for desktop, you're probably not building a product, you're making a demo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're okay burning like a huge, like 30% of your market right away, you killed your company before you even started it. So it's just not an option. So let's bite the bullet uh, and we just have to do it. So first off, with Android, uh, you would think it's simple because Android has Chrome on it and Chrome has WebRTC, right? Uh, not always true. So the new versions of Android have Chrome as the default rendering engine, but the old ones are using this old crappy like pile of junk web view that I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with it. It sucks, you can't even do like rounded corners correctly. Uh, so it definitely doesn't support WebRTC. So what I did for this was I was like, okay, take the existing code base, wrap it in Cordova, uh, and just throw it on Android, and hopefully it'll use Chrome. So I like pull out my phone, works fine on my phone, cool, go to test it with some other people, does not work on anyone else's phones because they're all on old versions of Android. Uh, so what I ended up finding out was there is this awesome project called Crosswalk, and you can just install this Cordova plugin called Crosswalk, and it makes sure that no matter what device you're on, you're always using the latest version of Chrome. So with this, we just type one command, it installs Crosswalk, and now on any Android device, we have the latest version of Chrome, and our app works. The craziest out of the whole bunch is iOS, because <laughs> Safari does not support WebRTC at all, uh, does not intend to support it, as far as I can tell, and Apple has also decided it's completely against uh, the rules of the App Store to use anything that isn't Safari. So we're stuck with it. Uh, I think the Crosswalk project had like a serious attempt in like conversation with Apple to try to make it work and just be like, seriously, we can't use our own rendering engine. Apple was like, yes, you can't use your own rendering engine and please use Safari. So once again, we have this other Cordova plugin that comes to the rescue, but this one is interesting. 
Uh, when your app loads, it attach, uh, attaches a spec compliant WebRTC implementation to the window object, so you can act like you're in Chrome even though you're in Safari. Uh, getting everything connecting is straightforward because all of that happens outside of the browser. It's all just live WebRTC wrapped in uh, Swift and Objective-C. So the difficult part is the rendering. So how do you take this video that's happening in this native library and render it back into a Safari web view? So this is a clever hack. Uh, what they actually do is they render a native video over your web view and position it in the same place where your video was actually supposed to be. Uh, so they take the computed style sheet from the video element, hide the video element, and then apply that style sheet to the native video that's over your thing. So it looks like that. Uh, and you can see there's a kind of a problem with that. Uh, you can't lay anything over the video. It's just always on top of everything. So let's say you're in like a video call and you want to have like buttons at the bottom to like end the call or something. Nope, can't do it. Video is always on top. So what we ended up doing was like a couple of different things. Uh, so for modals, anytime we wanted to show one, we delete the video, show the modal, and then when the modal goes away, we re-add the video. So it's like this insane system we have. Luckily, React has this stuff called portals that we were using, so it made it a little bit easier. Uh, and then for the buttons, what we ended up doing was using CSS calc to say, the video height is 100% minus the height of the control bar. So instead of the controls being overlaid on the video, it's a sibling to it. And it looks kind of crappy, but uh, we just got WebRTC working on iOS in Safari, which is great. It's crazy, but it happened. <laughs> now the final two that you would think are impossible are in fact possible with plugins. Uh, so there's a bunch of projects trying to tackle this. Uh, WebRTC for Everywhere, I think, is one of them. Uh, but the only one that I found that was mature enough was this Temesis project, which is like this proprietary thing, uh, which is not so great, because you have no idea what's going on inside of this plugin. You're telling your users to install. Uh, and the way that it works is, when a user comes to your web page, uh, if they don't have the plugin installed already and they're on either of these, this little yellow bar pops down that looks like something you would expect in Internet Explorer. It's kind of like the old ActiveX one. And it says, hey, if you want to use the video calling functionality of this website, you have to click here and install this little thing. So they click it. Uh, on IE, it's just like an installer. On Safari, it's an installer where you drag it into the Safari plugins folder. And after that, the thing just does the same thing the iOS one does. Uh, when they visit the web page, the plugin gets loaded, and then it attaches the WebRTC implementation to the window object. And now you have WebRTC on uh, Internet Explorer and Safari. But it's a little problematic because every module you've ever tried to use for WebRTC is now broken because they're expecting, they're like hard coded for Chrome or Firefox. So for iOS, Internet Explorer, and Safari, you're like shit out of luck because you just, they just don't work. So we ended up having to submit like a pull request for basically every single module we use to make them work on these. Uh, and those are still like slowly getting merged in, so we're working off of forks and stuff right now, which is not optimal. But from these learnings, uh, we ship the product and we have WebRTC on every platform. Uh, getting everything to work together sucked, and we had to do these platform-specific overhauls for the code, redesigns, and like all this other crap that shouldn't like you shouldn't have to change any of your code. And I think that building anything real right now with WebRTC is like a recipe for burnout. Like, I felt terrible after doing this. It was like, ugh, it was terrible. It was like staying up late every night. Like, what the hell is going on? Internet Explorer, ActiveX plugins. Like, what is this? Uh, I don't want anybody to ever have to go through this process again. So I decided to fix it. Uh, exclusively, just for all of you, this is the first time I've ever shown this, uh, I'm working on this project called RTC Everywhere. 
And basically, it takes all of the learnings and lessons and puts it in one simple module that you can require. So on any platform, you just require it in and you have WebRTC. So that means Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Android, iOS, and Node.js. Uh, you just require this module and you have WebRTC. It's great. Uh, on Android and iOS, you even get the option of picking between Cordova and React Native, depending on what you want to write your app in. So that's an option. To show you how easy it is, here's a 20-line chunk that just makes a video stream between two peers. Uh, I'm using the simple peer module for this, which I highly recommend for everyone else. All of that like clunky code that I showed earlier that's like the standard APIs, this just sits on top of all of that and makes it as easy as like six lines of code instead of like 50. So we have a couple of lines, relay the signaling messages between the two peers, and we do a little log statement so we know when they connect. Uh, for the sake of this demo, it's just all in memory, so you see I'm just passing the function straight in. Typically, you would have a WebSocket there. Whenever we get the stream, uh, we attach it to the video, and that's it. We have streaming WebRTC peer-to-peer -peer videos on every platform. And all of that results in this app that is running on my iPhone. And you can see that's my face. I recorded that last night. Uh, and it works great. 60 frames a second video streaming from somewhere else coming to my iPhone. So yeah, that's a lot to cram into 15 minutes, but uh, if you want to talk more about it or help me hack on it, come find me later. Thanks.